from your Cleveland Cavaliers, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Nance Jr., everybody! How are we doing, guys? I appreciate the intro. Gosh, that's that's better than I get in my home at my own house. I need, to come to, I need to come to this show more often. This is you want me to do it? Hold on. Did he take out the garbage? No, he didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Nance Jr. Yeah, that's more like it, actually. That's more like it. I got that, what, what's all this PA system in my yeah. living room? <laughs> this is rude. You know? <laughs> Alexa can hear this. Uh, Larry, dude, thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute honor. Uh, look, I mean, yeah, you are our first NBA player on the show. We, we will talk uh, some NBA in a moment, but, but we, uh, you, I mean, we all know why you are here. Chelsea won uh, the UEFA Champions League. Uh, right. You know, we follow you on Twitter. Uh, we know you talk about Chelsea, and you, and you know, and there's there's clear passion there uh, in them Twitter fingers. Uh, so I want to, yeah. you know, and just get a it. quote: If our fans don't follow uh, Larry Nance Jr. on Twitter. Uh, I believe the post was, it was never in doubt. It was never in doubt. <laughs> so, Christian, go ahead and so how, ask the question how, you're asking now that there's context. What was your, your reaction to uh, Chelsea winning the Champions League against Manchester City, which most people outside of you <laughs> did yeah. not think would happen? So, it was... I, I was in shock, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I was hoping we were going to win, but... That, that's city, you know what I mean? That's Pep and yeah. Brian and that's city. You know, everybody knows that. But when I saw the lineups come out, I was bummed Christian Pulisic wasn't starting, but I liked it. Uh, Raheem Sterling in the, in the starting 11 for city. I, 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 you know what? Uh, he might still be in the, he <laughs> might still be in the pocket of Reese James. So I, you know, I, I'm, it was never in doubt. <laughs> it was never in Reece, doubt. Reese James played out of this world yes. it's absolutely incredible i uh, i did not think in any way shape or form i didn't think chelsea stood a chance whether pulisic was starting or not but one of the things that i guess i didn't give enough credit to is just how much tuchel changed this team around mm -hmm. were you confident when they got rid of frank lampard are you that much of a chelsea fan that you were like no 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 we need frank here no i was a frank guy i'm still a Frank. Yeah. Guy. i mean frank okay. is when i first got into chelsea frank was the man so like he still is the man to me, and and uh, when we got rid of him, it, you know, it hurt a little bit. But at the same time, like looking back on it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I guess, I mean, maybe he could have a job in the front office. Yeah, yeah. Let's put, you know, president of, I know we do president of basketball operations. Maybe he could do like, you know, president of soccer operations, football operations. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Zach Steffen, and I just kicked it with the Cooligans. What made you choose Chelsea? Um, gosh, so 2010 World Cup, South Africa. Um, Samuel Eto'o for Cameroon was on fire. Their team was exciting. They were dancing. They were scoring. It was a lot of fun. And Samuel Eto'o became my favorite player. Period. And then, so I was a fan of his and then went to college and then start, you know, got caught up in basketball and, you know, first few years of college or not, wasn't, wasn't worried too much about some soccer. Yeah, when I yeah. got back into it, I was like, all right, immediately I need to go find Samuel Eto'o again. And for that one year, he was on Chelsea. And so I started yeah. watching the games and didn't know anything about Chelsea, didn't know Manchester, didn't know any club teams whatsoever. Um, started watching him and Chelsea, and then it just my love for them grew from right then. And you know, it was David Luiz, Frank Lampard, uh, Ramirez, that whole group that was just so much fun to watch and play with on FIFA, which was a huge bonus. Um, so that's kind of where my fandom stemmed from, and now I'm um, now I follow like the academy kids on Instagram and whatnot. <laughs> Like I followed Billy Gilmore like two years ago on Instagram, so like, yeah, he's my kind of my finding. <laughs> You're like, yeah. we need you kids. Yeah, like, we do. Who's this NBA player good yelling at me to play better? Oh, I'm 17. Sure. Can I share our Samuel Eto story? Because we actually met Samuel Eto in no. uh, it, yeah, <laughs> in it's pretty Florida, cool. In Florida, um, uh, at, at uh, in Bradenton, it was like a, a a youth tournament, and he was there, kind of a, a inspiring the the Barcelona uh, academy kids. But while we were all in the same green room, and it was Samuel Eto, and then also Ali Krieger and Ashlyn Harris, and we're really close friends with Ali and Ashlyn, and we were 
talking to Ali Nashon for like an hour and Sam Mileto is just across the room and we're just absolutely ignoring this legend. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking oh, over at us like, shouldn't you be talking to me? No offense, <laughs> ladies. I'm the important one here. Oh, man. His assistants were like, no, 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 we'll, we'll go get someone to talk to you if you want someone to talk to you. <laughs> also, we met him twice. We actually met him doing an event here in New York. Yeah. And I just started speaking English to him. And one of his helpers came and he was like, you could speak to him in French, in Spanish, yeah, in yeah. this. Like, he listed all the languages he knows. He goes, he's not that good at English. I mean, he's almost as good at English as me. And I don't speak all those other languages. I only speak Spanish. What the hell's going on? Samuel Atto. Oh, man. You guys met him. T- I would love to meet him once. I, I swear, I've got this, you know, I. I you know, play sports. So I've got this jersey full of, this basement full of jerseys and whatnot. That is the one that I want. I would, if, really? I, if I could have one, like I've got my Kobe one down here. I've got Dirk and Dwayne Wade and all these guys, Thibaut Courtois, Kevin De Bruyne. I want Samuel Eto'o more <laughs> than any jersey in the entire world. Frank Lampard. Now that you say Ronaldo, that, I don't care. There's going to be some Arsenal fan or some Tottenham fan that's going to send you his jersey from Anji Mahachkala when he's coming to Russia. <laughs> Yeah. That'll go up. As long, look, as long as he signs it, it'll go up. I don't care if it's a, a garbage bag that he wore. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I, I want to talk a little bit more about Chelsea. You mentioned Christian Pulisic before. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, an American superstar and then uh, playing at Chelsea, winning Champions League. The, what, the, what do you think is in the future for, uh, for Christian Pulisic uh, within Chelsea? Because we don't know if he's going to be a starter. As an as a U.S. men's national team fan, we all want him to be, but maybe that's not. Is is a backup role a good fit for Christian Pulisic for the time being? Oh, that's a tough question. You're putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> if I were him, I would want more than that because he's so he's so talented, right? And not just not just you know subjectively as a as an American and a U.S. national team fan. Like I think objectively, he's very good. Right. Like he's, you know, came back in the post COVID break and was on fire. Um, you know, you had battled his injuries and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, he's objectively very good. So if we're just going to keep acquiring young talent to play in attack, I don't. If I were him, I would want more. And there's reports today that we're Tuchel is apparently after Adama Traore from Wolves. So I, I don't know if I were him. I think I'd want more than that. And I think he's better than that. $72 million, a lot of money to pay for a backup, though, you know? That's true. I wonder who's going to buy him. What do you What do you look at when you look at the NBA? It seems like basketball has become like a much bigger thing. I'm starting to see basketball players in the NBA swap jerseys, which is very clearly a soccer thing. You mm-hmm. see that in the NFL as well. What is the influence of, of soccer on the NBA, especially international soccer? And is it is it a popular sport in the locker rooms? So it wasn't, you know, when I first got in the league, which feels like, Maybe it was was six years ago now. Shit, I'm old. Um, (laughs) Six years ago now, it was, you know, I was kind of the weirdo. Uh, Like, we all watch actual American football. What are you doing? (laughs) Right. Uh, You know, I'll I'll kick the ball around the yard. But um, no, so not really. Nobody really talked about it. And then more European guys started getting, you know, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, uh, even Giannis coming in, Joel Embiid. Uh, There are... The, the superstars from overseas are, you know, starting to, you know, starting to kind of grow the game more and more. And I'm obviously thrilled to see it. But, um, you know, I've made some uh, Josh Hart is a huge Chelsea fan as well. That's that's my boy. Uh, Alex Caruso is a city fan. Josh Richardson is an Arsenal fan, unfortunately. Um, John <laughs> Let's go Josh Richardson. Richardson. In the NBA. Damn, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they don't make it yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> just like he's one of the few um, uh, yeah but it's growing and I'm you know, I'm thrilled to see it because you know I, I'm you know trying to make our young guys get into it you know, every chance I get I've got I've got the games on and talking to them about it and whatnot so um, I'm glad to see it grow yeah I think the jersey swapping is a great thing I've got like I said I've got these jerseys down here in my basement and that's um, you know I, I'm glad that took over because uh, I think it's a really cool uh, change of you know, exchange of respect between two players, and um, you know, if, even if there are more things brought over, I don't, I don't know about all the flopping, but you know, we're getting there. We're trying. And, yeah. and how? Um, what about like you know, even like LeBron owning Liverpool? Yeah. Would you guys Liverpool, play together, right? 
Uh, yeah, I played with Braun. Yeah, there yeah. Is there any like uh, at least trash talk when uh, when these big tournaments are, are going on? Because obviously, even and even the you know maybe in, on the more controversial note, like the Super League, was there trash talk about that kind of stuff going on? Because like, yo, uh, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It was. Um, yeah, he. I mean, his him buy, buying into Liverpool at that time was. I mean. <sighs> ridiculous yeah yeah yeah. you got it to the moon before yeah exactly exactly to the moon exactly yeah um, he's, lebron is the original dogecoin he's the original <laughs> dogecoin it's crazy um no but yeah you know when chelsea played liverpool there was banter back between back and forth between us the whole super league thing i kind of i kind of stayed out of that because i you know i know we were you know i knew we were right in the middle of it i just kind of wanted yeah. to stay away from that but uh no it's great you know i, I know i know Braun is in liverpool kevin durant owns uh part of philadelphia the philadelphia um, union i believe there's uh you know steve nash does a lot i he i know he's has ownership with i want to say mallorca in spain yeah um, yeah and, and vancouver yeah, James Harden owns Dynamo, a part yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's something that I'm looking, I'm, I'm interested in as well. You know, that's something that, um, you know, ownership is, is, is. Uh, well, th- well, Larry, th- we, we have a Sunday League team called Cooligans <laughs> FC that we could really lo- use a little bit of investment. I feel We'd like we'd like to purchase a Christian Pulisic as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is, we play in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, just a you know a couple fever where the Nets play. Uh, it's, it, look, I feel like. Three, four million dollars could really change the look of our team. That's all yeah, I'm saying. And just make the checkout to me and don't worry about it. It will go to the team. I promise. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll come scout. You know, I'll point one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As long as, I get, yeah, we want- as long as I get to be hands on, I'm in. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. But we you want- can play on the team. <laughs> I mean, look, keeper. I'm a great keeper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they right. use small goals, so you can lay down and still cover that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Megan Rapino here. I just kicked it with the soccer gods and cooligans. Check it out. Larry, we have uh, we have questions from uh, some of our fans, uh, which is Gully Squad. That is our supporters group. Uh, so let's get to their question. We have a questions from uh, Dennis Higgins. Uh, he's a DC United uh, supporter, and he asks, "Who's the best FIFA player in the NBA? Any uh, any FIFA matches you you played uh, against that were kind of tough? Because I've heard Joel Embiid is pretty good. So I've never played Joe. Um, I haven't okay. played Joe, but I will say." We had a FIFA tournament with the Lakers, and I cleaned the house. Well, I mean, okay, so you? Lou, I, look, I beat Lou Dang without a problem. Ivica Zubats beat him without. Josh Hart can't. He, he can't even pick up a controller with me. Like, I beat Caruso. Nobody wants to see me in FIFA. Look, if, if you want to set up a tournament, except this new FIFA is kind of bad. I, I'm not good at this one. Yeah, it's not last great. year or two years ago, oh, man. I'll ticky talk you to death. Yo. All right, are you, you who play. do you play with though? You don't play with Chelsea. Where do you go? France national national team? What do you think I am? I'm a blue. I'm a blue at heart. I'm I'm str- nothing but Chelsea. Okay, <laughs> nothing but Chelsea. Yeah. Or or I will say the Belgian national team. I'll play with them too. Not okay, bad. a little. Uh, do you remember Eden Hazard back in the day when he was with Chelsea? That's what you like to do. You said, you said do I remember Eden Hazard? <laughs> <laughs> it was like last year. He's coming back. Yeah, I don't think you want him. Him and I got the same uh, pants size right now. Uh, <laughs> we got a question from uh, from Dimitri Parr, which this goes along with the question we were asking before. If Abramovich ever sold or released Roman stock options, or let's say uh, Chelsea NFTs, would you ever consider owning a piece of Chelsea if that was possible? I would. I would swim. I would swim to go buy my piece. Yes, I would walk and swim, ride a bike. I don't care whatever mode of transportation I have to do to get there and snatch whatever piece of it I can. Take my money. Take my money. Perfect. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we just got to set it up so that Roman Abramovich is standing on the other side of an Olympic cool pool so that you don't <laughs> injure yourself in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Look, whatever I've got to do. 
Larry, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, man. This has been uh, incredible. Of you're course. welcome. You're welcome back on the show anytime you want to be on. Uh, do you want to? Is there anything you want to let people know about before we let you go? Um, yeah. So you know, I, I've been doing this um, community relief effort, guys. It's important, you know, now more than ever to you know support your community, support your local businesses. Um, you know, there's a uh, you know, there's charities, there's lots of ways to get in, you know, to get in touch, get in contact and, and, and uh, help not just here in Cleveland, but wherever you're at, um, you know, they can certainly use your help. So uh, now's a hard time for a lot of people. If you can donate help, um, you know, there's some people that need some help. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So make sure to follow Larry uh, on social media. I'm sure you have all the links and everything will be available. At uh, Larry uh, TN22. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll be I'll be tweeting updates about, you know, the things I'm doing in Cleveland and ways to get involved um, everywhere. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, th dude, thank you so much, man. And uh, we have a couple uh, last piece of business. We have to get to our Galasso gift. We're going to give you a scenario uh, and we will you, you will celebrate a goal and we will turn it into a gift that will live on the Internet forever. So, forever. Uh, Alexis, you can't do this with a basketball shot. You can't really <laughs> celebrate, but you can with a goal. <laughs> uh, so, Alexis, you want to give him a scenario? Yes. For some reason, you are in Roman Abramovich's private owner's box. Right. And you happen to be at the next Champions League final, Chelsea versus insert whoever. OK, <laughs> for some reason, it's down to a header in the last second on a corner kick. And Robin Bromford says, get in there. You yes. run down there. You don't even have to jump. It bounces off your forehead and you score a goal. You win the Champions League for Chelsea. How do you own, oh, by the way, and that was for ownership. Now you're also a part owner. No, How do you celebrate? <laughs> is, it, is this like, is this like an Allison style header? where like 95th minute. Like, uh, right, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you're falling back the whole night. Uh, you wearing goalkeeper gloves for some reason. You're not even in, in goal. <laughs> well, if, if we had some bleachers behind me, I'd run up there and get in the stands and, and celebrate with the fans. But like, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I'm scooting back and giving you a big, yeah. <laughs> I we doing like, the Usain uh, Bolt. The, the Usain Bolt. I'm pointing right in my butt. Like I'm pointing right at Abramovich and he's like <laughs> tapping my pockets like you know <laughs> I need all that. I need all like you, like me. Yeah. This is he's us. Printing out your ownership certificate. I'm, I'm, I'm kissing the badge and everything, pointing at him like, yeah, it's yeah, us now. He's like, yo, <laughs> give me that D to Stanford Bridge. Uh yeah. you're, you're you're like, the sleeves off your soccer jersey so it's more like a basketball jersey. <laughs> You're doing it all. Oh, uh, Larry. Oh, we're not ahead of the whole thing. <laughs> Larry, thank you so much, man. Best of luck uh, next season uh, in the NBA. Thank Dude, uh, please come back on uh, before next season begins. You're at, at, you, we could talk about so much more Chelsea, uh, so much more NBA. Uh, absolute, absolute honor to have you on the show. So thank you so much. Uh, everybody, <laughs> please... Please, please stick around. We're going to have uh, Brazil and Arsenal legend Gilberto Silva uh, on the show. <laughs> All three nervous. of them are going to be on the show. <laughs> uh, so uh, come right back.